So in the two losses this year, Ohio State's linebackers were exposed in this 48-3 to win over Michigan State. The linebackers played pretty well, and they did it without two of their starting linebackers. How do we explain this, Bill Landis? I don't know. It's kind of weird. I think it presents a, an interesting situation for Ohio State moving forward. Um, I'm not suggesting that Jerome Baker and Dante Booker should be like in fear of their jobs. Um, but they weren't there, and the linebackers played their best game of the year, and, and I, I don't think that's something you can ignore. Uh, maybe it's just a, a case of like the depth coming along a little bit. I think Tough Borland, that middle linebacker, is probably suited for a team like Michigan State that has some spread stuff but isn't really going to spread you out. They're going to they're gonna line it up and try to run it up the middle on you, and they did that, and Tough Borland led the team with 11 tackles. Um, so maybe it was just a circumstantial thing that, that this was the right kind of game for those guys, Malik Harrison and Tough Borland, to shine. But it's a very interesting linebacker situation now for Ohio State. Harrison's a guy who's been their fourth linebacker a lot of the year, plays in nickel situations a lot. What kind of vibe did you get from him, Tim, of – Malik Harrison's going to play a big role on this team down the line. How did he think he did today? Uh, you know, I talked to him. He said he really only felt pressure on kind of the first play after the game. I think after that kind of settled in. You know, I mean, we're talking about a guy who plays a lot, you know, as a rotational linebacker. So it's not like he hasn't played in three weeks. And all of a sudden, boom, you're starting instead of Dante Booker. He's played quite a bit. And, you know, I think he felt pretty confident out there, you know. Outside of the 20-yard run by L.J. Scott early in the game, they were fantastic. Both Borland and Harrison were great. Actually, talking to Damon Webb, he called Tough Borland their run stopper, and he you know he showed that again today. He had a great game against Army with all those tackles. Does that again against Michigan State? I don't know. Like I felt like they weren't tested that much. They they weren't they weren't locked. They didn't get locked in coverage that much, and that was the thing that that burned them in the two losses was the coverage stuff. They can usually tackle. You know, Michigan State seemed like they were slamming into a wall the whole time. The defensive line, I thought, played played well. Um, I think Baker and Booker would have done the same thing that Harrison and, and Borland did today. I was very critical of Bill Davis, the linebackers coach, after last week. Um, you know, I don't I don't think it was a – I just felt like Michigan State didn't attack them in the, in the way that I would have tried to attack the linebackers. They ended up with Denzel Ward covering the tight end on a couple plays, and he did well. So I want to give – I mean, tough Borland making 11 tackles on runs up the middle is great, but they do that. They they, they, they do that at times. Worley's been a run stopper at times too. Um, I just felt like Michigan State didn't learn a ton from the Iowa game plan. And and now credit to the Ohio State defense, but also I don't know what – Brian Lewerke threw for 400 yards into the past two weeks – how? I don't know. That guy didn't do anything today. So anyway, I'm just going to say that Michigan State stinks. Um, Tim, Bill, I'm Doug. More coming at Cleveland.com.